In my last video, I compared four of the top coding models available today, including the new DeepSeek version 3, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, Quen 2.5 Coder, and Google's Gemini 2.0 Flash. It may not come as much of a surprise, but the current heavyweight champion, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, still reigns supreme, barely edging out the new kid on the block, DeepSeek version 3. DeepSeek came out swinging competing favorably against the top tier models from OpenAI and Anthropic and even beating them in some of the most common coding benchmarks. But performance isn't the only thing that's impressive about this model. At 14 cents per million input tokens and 28 cents per million output tokens, DeepSeek offers the best price performance ratio in the market. With Sonnet coming in at a substantially higher $3 per million input tokens and $15 per million output tokens. The project I started during the comparison is Contextly, a project I am building to help AI users manage prompts and context artifacts. I'll be using this application in this video as I take a deeper dive into DeepSeek version 3, demonstrating how to get the most out of it when developing Ruby and Rails applications. After recording my last video, I decided to continue using Ader and DeepSeek to finish out the features that are currently available in Contextly. Users are able to create, read, update, and delete prompts in an interface that rivals single-page applications developed with tools like React and Vue using modern Rails, including Hotwire, Stimulus, and Turbo. But by far the most valuable feature of Contextly is its ability to pull in data from text files and PDF files, from web pages, and even YouTube video transcripts. And once the data is extracted, it can be optimized using AI, using a default or a custom prompt, therefore reducing the number of input tokens required and improving the outcome. Once you are satisfied, you can copy the entire text or a link that will present the raw text and then use that within your LLM. As I mentioned in the intro, I've been working almost exclusively with Ader and DeepSeek V3 for about the past two weeks, and these are my findings so far. DeepSeek V3 excelled when creating models and controllers and even generated functional hotwire code. I would say in this aspect, it's very similar to Claude 3.5 Sonnet. However, it struggled a bit when generating views using CSS0. DeepSeek works well with Ader and with Contextly, and its speed is on par with Sonnet. And last but certainly not least, DeepSeek is very affordable. My goal for this video is to dial in prompts and context management using Ader and DeepSeek V3. This combination offers an affordable alternative to IDEs like Cursor and Windsurf for development in general, but more specifically for Ruby on Rails developers. I am confident that this performance can be comparable to Sonnet once I develop a better understanding of how to augment its Ruby on Rails knowledge with the right context and how to speak to it with the optimal prompts. So the video outline is, first, I'm going to generate a form, a sign-up form, using Cursor Composer and Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Next, I'm going to generate the same form using Ader and Claude 3.5 Sonnet. I'm going to use these to compare with DeepSeek and Ader. And so finally, I'm going to work with prompts and context to achieve similar results with Ader and with DeepSeek V3. To get things started with Composer and Claude Sonnet, I am first going to copy over the CSS0 utilities class file that has been optimized by Contextly. In this particular case, I'm going to actually copy the file contents because Contextly is not deployed to production yet and Composer cannot access localhost. I've pasted the text directly into Composer and asked it to add it to the context. And now I'm going to feed it the prompt. I would like for you to propose a form that can be used when enrolling new users into Contextly. The form should use CSS0 utility classes and component CSS. And here is where Composer really excels. You can see here it's telling me that it's first going to search for existing user-related views or forms so that it can maintain consistency. I can already see from the summary here that it's using CSS0 utility classes appropriately. And it's even picked up on some of the component classes even though I haven't added them to the context. 
Taking a quick look at the form, I can see that it is using the appropriate CSS zero classes. I don't see any Tailwind classes here or any uh, non-existent classes, which oftentimes can be the case. So clearly we've set the bar high here. Now I want to see how Ader can do with Claude Sonnet 3.5. And so I'm going to switch models. And you can see here that Ader is now using uh, Claude 3.5 Sonnet for both the architect model and the editor model. And now I'm going to feed it the exact same prompt that I sent Composer, but I'm going to use the ask command to ensure that uh, Ader doesn't try to save the generated code just yet. And once again, I can see that Claude is using the proper CSS zero utility classes and once again has picked up some of the component classes. A quick scan of the file and I can see that it is 100% CSS zero. And here you can see the final form. So I'm super impressed that Ader with Claude uh, was able to perform on par with Cursor and Claude. Email and password work as expected and Claude even added a accept TOS checkbox. To get started, I'm going to copy a link to an optimized version of the CSS0 utility classes. I'm going to pass this URL as an argument to an Ader scrape utility in a terminal that will allow me to verify that the results are what I expect. And the output looks good, so I'm going to move on over to Ader, which has been started with DeepSeek v3 as both the architect and editor model. And I'm going to add that to the context. At this point, the context is exactly the same as it was with Claude, so I'm going to go ahead and paste in the prompt and hit enter and we'll see what it does. And I can see here uh, that this is using Tailwind classes here with this gap dash asterisk, same thing with the padding, and we have this um, max width, medium, MX auto. A lot of these are tailwind classes and these hover classes with these uh, classes that do not exist in CSS zero. So the context was not enough to satisfy um, DeepSeek version three. And um, so we're gonna need to provide additional context to get this to work. Uh, but also you noticed when I used Claude, the cost was 11 cents to run this prompt where with DeepSeek this is 85 thousandths of a cent. That's quite a cost savings. So I'm going to give it a second prompt and see how it does. This time I'm going to run it with the um, aid or ask command so that it doesn't attempt to save the code that it generates. But this prompt reads, the form you generated uses several Tailwind classes that are not available in this project. I would like you to use CSS zero classes exclusively. Also, could you leave out the focus and hover classes for now? So let's take a look at it and see how it did. So it's using gap instead of gap four, so that's good, and gap half instead of gap two. So it's doing the right thing there. Um, it's using the rounded, which is a class, BG main, um, BG white, uh, BG primary, I don't believe, and BG white, I don't believe our CS is zero or not CSS zero class, so I'm gonna take a look at that. So taking a look at this CSS zero utilities, I can see that BG white is actually a CSS zero class. Um, however, BG primary is not, unless that's on one of the um, components, and I can take a look at that. Uh, let's see if we have text primary and text subtle. We have text primary and we have text subtle, so those are both there. Um, BG main is there. So I think it only missed a couple this time, which is a big improvement. I did a quick search in the code and I could not find a BG primary. So it looks like that may be the only class that it got wrong, unless there are additional classes in this form. So we have this shadow here and this max width with medium and MX auto. So we still have a lot of Tailwind classes in here uh, that it didn't include in the summary. So one thing I've learned when working with these models is sometimes it's just best to ask it what it needs in order to accomplish a goal. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna ask it, the form you generated still has quite a few Tailwind classes. What can I provide you with in order to prevent this from happening in the future? Some ideas might be examples that use desired classes or the CSS for various components, in this case, forms and form elements. And I'm gonna see how it responds to this.
So let's see how it responded. Um, okay, saying this version is more conservative using only flex, flex call, gap, gap half, P2, P6. And again, MT4 is not, that's a tailwind. Uh, this would be MI4 for CSS0. BG main, those are both good. Those three are all good. Um, border and rounded are good. So let's come back up here and take a look at the form and see if it missed anything else. Um, so this helped a lot. So it did a much better job um, just by me prompting it again. So like three prompts, even though I really didn't add any additional context, I just kept probing it. And it looks like it improved the outcome quite a bit. It's still not exactly where I would like it. Um, clearly it missed one of the classes. Um, we'll have to see what this looks like, but I'm not satisfied that yet. I, I would prefer not have to provide it with three prompts every time I wanted it to generate a form. So I'm going to try something different. But before that, I'm going to read its response up here at the top. So it's saying, you're absolutely right. I'm still slipping into Tailwind habits. Let me start fresh with a proper CSS0 implementation. To help me get this right, it would be extremely helpful if you could provide example components that use the CSS0 classes correctly, form elements, CSS if available, color variables, um, spacing scale, and border radius values. Okay, so I can provide some of this, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it some uh, CSS that it can use for inputs, and then I'm also going to give it an example form. Within Contextly, I've created a couple of different context items, basically scraping uh, content from the CSS Zero lookbook. The first one, I've um, concatenated a lot of different CSS for forms and the stimulus controllers for form elements that require them, such as date pickers. And the second one is just more, is a little bit smaller, just has input styling in here and then an example form. And of course, this was optimized by Contextly, so it's kind of minimal which is good, again, reducing the number of tokens required. So I'm just going to take that one, and I'm going to copy the URL, and I'm going to come back over into Ader, and I'm going to use the web command, and then I'm going to paste it, and then that is going to add that to the context. And then I'm going to ask it if that helped and if it can try regenerating that form. I'm going to ask it, I'm going to say, I added the CSS for some form elements and an example form both using CSS0, does this help? Can you model the signup form based on this? And once again, let's see how it does. So far this looks good because it's telling me, yes, this is extremely helpful. Based on the example form in CSS0 documentation, I'll create a signup form that matches your styling convention. Here's the implementation. And so far so good, this looks really good. Um, we don't have um, any Tailwind classes so far. And it's actually using the input class from CSS, or I mean, yeah, from CSS0, which is good. And so, yeah, I think um, we have success here. This is probably the best we're going to get. Um, the cost is still uh, less than a penny. It's at one hundredth or twelve hundredths of a penny, which is pretty impressive. Um, that's a hundred times less than... Uh, Claude to accomplish this goal. However, time is worth money. And so if I have to run this many prompts every time I want to accomplish anything, that certainly isn't good. Um, but in this particular case, now that I know how DeepSeek works a little bit more, I can provide these context items more easily when I'm making a request. And here's the final version of the DeepSeek um, signup form. And you can see it looks really good. It's very similar to what Claude created. Claude added a accept terms of use checkbox, but it didn't have the confirm password. So they each have their um, advantages over the other. But overall, I would say it's definitely on par with Claude. So to summarize this video, I would say that Ader with DeepSeek version three is every bit as capable as Claude Sonnet with Cursor Composer. It just requires a little bit more careful management of your context and your prompts. Also, with Ader, use the ask command. It's a lot easier to modify your prompts and add context items before you generate and save the final code. It's a lot easier to do that than it is to actually go back and modify the code after it's generated. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel. And if you like the video, please hit the like button below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.